Hello and welcome to another brief demonstration of the integration of OCL related technologies with the Papyrus UML modeling workbench in the Eclipse Mars release. Today we'll look at using Axelio to transform a UML model to text. So we've looked in the past couple of demonstrations at the definition of constraints in UML models using OCL. In this brief demonstration, we'll look at a model to text transformation that extracts OCL constraints from a UML model and summarizes them in a simple XML formatted document. So, whereas OCL is the basis of the MOF model to text transformation language in the OMG family of modeling specifications. So is the Eclipse OCL implementation the basis of Eclipse's uh, implementation of MOF M2T, which goes by the brand name Axelio. So looking again at our comically simple banking system model. We have persons that have accounts and in this example the person and the account class both have constraints that we've seen before in other demonstrations. What we'd like to do is generate a small XML model that just enumerates the classes that have constraints and the invariant constraints within those classes. So, our Axelio script to do that is based on UML. It creates an OCL summary from a package that is the root of our model. It generates a file with a name based on the name of the package. So that's an OCL expression using some capability, some operations defined by MOF M2T or Excelio to extend the set of operations available on the string class from the OCL standard library. So a simple boilerplate for our XML file that we'll generate. The XML declaration, the root element is just the OCL summary with the model name and then we recursively process packages to extract OCL constraints from the classifiers in those packages. So here is an iteration over nested packages to recursively extract OCLs from them. And then for any given package we emit an XML package element with the name extracted by this OCL expression from the package element in the model. We iterate with this for template construct provided by Excelio over classifiers selected by this OCL expression to extract constraints from those classifiers. So further, a template for classifiers to extract constraints from them comes in two different variations. The same template signature templates as defined by the MOF M2T being a kind of operation. So whereas in OCL we can define additional operations for any class in the model. Likewise, in this model to text transformation language, we can define OCL like uh, templates for the classes in our model. Moreover, we can overload the same template with different guard conditions to determine which variant of that template is invoked for any particular element. So if the classifier has constraints, we emit a type 
XML element that iterates the constraints of the classifier and spits out the body specifications in C data sections. And in the case that the classifier does not have constraints, we simply emit an XML comment indicating that there was a classifier that didn't have constraints, just as a comment so that we don't wonder why it is absent from the content of the XML document. So here we see uh, obviously the classifier meta class in UML does not have a has constraints operation. That is a query that we define as an OCL expression for the purpose of helping us to build our templates more concisely and clearly. Likewise, to determine whether a constraint has an OCL specification and to extract the OCL specification out of a constraint because the UML model for constraints is uh, fairly complex. An opaque expression can have any number of bodies corresponding to any number of languages describing how to interpret those bodies. So if we find a language OCL, then we get the corresponding body out of the opaque expression. And a simple utility for safely printing out the string representation of uh, a string that may be null. So just about the simplest example of a model to text transformation for UML models with the MOF M2T slash Excelio language. So why don't we try running this transformation on our example model. There it runs, it's finished, we see the output comes here. Open that in the XML editor. Okay, good, so we have our OCL summary from the user model. The root package, of course, is named user model. There are a bunch of types in there that have invariant constraints. That all looks good. We use the C data section in order to protect uh, angle brackets, especially the left pointing ones that we just don't happen to, oh, like this one, yeah. But there are some peculiarities going on here. So we sorted the types that we iterated by name. So yes, account, account kind. So these didn't have constraints, but we see the nice little comment indicating that. But then there's this funny thing here that has uh, apparently no name. Where did that come from? And also, it's not so informative as it could be this type element. What kind of type? So these might be classes, they might be data types, they might be enumerations, uh, they might be activities, who knows? Uh, so we'd like to be a bit more precise about that. So first off, one of the things to remember about UML class models is that associations are classifiers. They have member ends that are properties and as far as OCL is concerned and you know possibly other languages, those member ends can be viewed as like properties of the association as a classifier. And in fact, in object models, we instantiate associations as links that are instances of associations just as objects are instances of classes. In any case, this, does, this association in our model does not have a name, and that is where the funny looking comment in the XML came from. We're not going to expect to have owned rules of our associations. So what we can do is we can further specify or refine the iteration over classifiers to filter out those classifiers 
that are associations. So let's try running that to update our XML document. And indeed we see that funny unnamed type comment has gone away. So then the next thing is to address our need to be more precise about the type of a classifier. So that's here. What we can do is extract using an OCL expression from the classifier. We can access its ecore meta class, get the name of that, and lowercase the first character to emit an XML element and we need to close the tag with the same string to emit an XML element that is named according to the meta class name of the classifier in question. Now here we cheat a bit because Excelio and the Eclipse OCL implementation are based on the EMF project from Eclipse and its eCore meta model. We have access to the features of all E objects in our model coming from eCore. This does not correspond to anything in UML or OCL, it vaguely uh, corresponds to the the meta class type from of an object from MOF, and in fact, it also vaguely corresponds to the OCL type operation that previous iterations of the OCL specification had provided for accessing the meta type of an element for purposes of reflection that has since been removed by more recent versions of the OCL specification due to various problems in the semantics of OCL type as it was specified. So we resort to this Eclipse specific and Excelio specific access to the E class. So let's run the transformation again. And now we see nice class element instead of this more uh, generic type element in the XML. So there you have an example of an OCL based model to text transformation language in the Mars release of the Eclipse project. Thank you.